NBM has a lot of weird quirks to it, and to this day, most of them remain relatively unknown. Scatter enough wiki entries or community forums and you could maybe get a mental encyclopedia, but that's way too much effort, so here's a video instead. These are 101 tips to improve at NBM, ranging from the niche to the downright game-breaking. Hopefully everyone learns a thing, or 20. Alright, here we go. Robots will take fall damage in the same way that any regular player would. This can be exploited through the Heavy's Knockback Rage upgrade. Just camp under a cliff, wait for the giant to fall, and shoot them to the moon like a defunct Tesla. There are two ways to spawn in a Sentry Buster. Get 15 Sentry kills or do 3000 Sentry damage. Fun fact, self-damage via the Wrangler also counts. So if you need a mid-game buster, you can get one on the fly with enough bloodshed. It's possible to cancel the Flog's taunt animation off of the robot's heads, giving you extra uptime while crit boosted and invulnerable. You can set this up by either detonator jumping, throwing yourself off the high ground, or through buying jump height upgrades. The higher the better. If you run into a group of robots while using the stock Mediguns Uber, all of that block damage will be converted into shield charge. If your meter's empty, try purposefully running into enemy fire while Ubered for an easy fill. The engineer is given infinite metal and instant building construction at the beginning of each wave. You you can abuse this to give your teammates an ocean of free ammo before the round begins. Got a teammate who's treating you like shit? Switch to Pyro, max out Air Blast Force, and give him a bit of Buster Retaliation. Aim at a 5 o'clock angle for the best results. If you're gonna get kicked anyways, may as well go out with a bang. If you try to switch classes in the middle of a wave, you normally won't be able to. You can bypass this by typing Retry in the dev console. Upon rejoining, you can choose a new class. You won't be able to refund any of the credits that you've already spent, but it does open up some degenerate strategies. When tank busting as a demo, you'll always want to position your sticky bombs close to the side of the tank and blow each one up as soon as possible. This will give you around a 20% damage boost compared to setting up big piles directly under the tank. When reviving as medic, spam click the reanimator instead of holding one click. Constantly refreshing that initial meter boost will get your teammates up much faster. Spy has the highest baseline aggro in the game. Almost every robot will immediately target you the moment you make your presence known. In the late game, you can max out health regen and resistances to become a long-ranged aggro lightning rod, taking all the attention away from your team. A few years back, Valve removed the ability to inspect your teammates' upgrades during a game. You can bypass this barrier by dying mid-wave and stalking whatever player you want to check out. All of their upgrades will show up on the weapon tab. The Demo Knight is supposed to be the only class in the game to be granted both damage damage and crit on kill upgrades for his melee weapons supposed to be. If you upgrade the half Satoichi on the demo, equip the melee on Soldier, then switch classes, the upgrades will carry over. You're now a Wave 1 Soldier Knight. Pair it with the Conch and the Rocket Jumper for free mobility, and to be honest, it's not that bad. If your team ever gets wiped out at the front, the NG should buy one tick of metal capacity and an upgrade canteen. That's a large enough metal pool to place both a Sentry and Dispenser and get them booted up to level 3 in a couple of seconds. Much faster than rebuild building manually. F4 button not working? Try holding down the FN key while pressing it. Alternatively, head over to Options, Keyboard, scroll down until you find the Class Specific tab, and look for the Toggle Player Ready option. Here you can bind it to whatever you want. There are some parts of each map where you can fuck with the Spybot's AI. They'll flood into your field of view, but they'll rarely, if ever, try to attack letting you kill them all very easily. Notable examples include this spot close to the player's spawn on Big Rock, this rock close to the robot spawn on Manworks, and this lip close to the meat grinder on Manhattan. Did you know that you could actually survive Sentry Buster explosions? If you buy max blast resistance on Heavy and the medic has max overheal expert, you can tank the hit. On Manhattan, there are several periods where giant demo knights will rush their way onto the field. As long as everyone stays behind this fence, they'll crash into the wall every time. Get a demo to put a trap up near the ramp and they'll almost always walk into it, assuming the bomb isn't immediately in view. Each point of the canteen specialist upgrade reduces the cost of buying canteens. However, refunding upgrades doesn't undo those purchases. So, you can max out the upgrade, buy the canteens at a discounted price, refund your credits, then only buy one point of the upgrade. By doing this trick, you can save up to 60 credits per wave. If you ever get kicked by a toxic group on the last 
last wave, simply go back to the mission select menu and deselect every mission except for the one you were kicked from. Check the join game in progress box, then queue back in frame 1. You don't get banned from a lobby after a vote kick, so good chance you can make your way back in. If you stand on this very specific part of Rottenberg's front right rock, you can detonate sentry busters remotely. You can also do this on Manhattan with max jump height. Just hop onto the crates up here and you'll trigger the buster. If you look at the loot screen, you might think you can only get a maximum of 10 items per mission. This isn't true actually. There's a very, very rare chance to get 11 or sometimes even 12 items. You'll immediately notice because the menu will give you a scroll bar on the right. The chances of this happening are extremely rare, probably like 1 in 500 but it can happen. If you always crouch while double jumping, Scout only needs two points of jump height upgrades to jump from the top and bottom sections of Manhattan, Rottenburg, and Decoy. But if you want more leeway, having three ticks of the upgrade doesn't cost much more. If you buy two-way teleporter, your teammates will often use it to port back to spawn between waves. You can pick it up and put it back down repeatedly to remove the three second cooldown between teammates, expediting the rollout. Similarly, always Always have your teleporter face towards the spawn door and preferably as close as possible. This will give your teammates a seamless path to the upgrade station instead of needing to constantly turn around after using it. If you're getting revived while talking in chat, the game will forcibly stop you from typing. So, once rezzed, hit the escape key to close the chat so you aren't locked out from moving. Finished an MVM mission but got no items? That means you've completed a mission that you've already done. To prevent this, make sure that only missions not yet completed is always checked on. Ammo canteens restore more than just ammo. They also restore Mad Milk, Criticola, Bonk, Jurati, Sappers, and even an NG's entire metal reserve. Ammo canteens also immediately bring you back to your max clip, meaning you can use them to avoid needing to reload. For ammo intensive weapons like rocket or grenade launchers, make sure you use the canteen right as your available fire hits zero. This will give you two back to back clip dumps. If you keep holding the left mouse button, Button while blowing a banner, you can preserve your buffs until you let go of it. This isn't MVM specific by any means, but given how many banners you're blowing each round, it's good to know. Whenever you finish a wave, you can switch classes to immediately port back to spawn. Doing this will minimize the amount of downtime you'll face between waves. Sentries with maxed out building health make for excellent tanks. Just plop it down in a robot's pathway, wrangle it to triple its HP, and if the sentry's ever about to break, use an upgrade canteen to instantly bring it back to full. If positioned correctly, you can keep the giants locked in place basically until you're dry on canteens. You might wonder why some credit thresholds give you credit bonuses on some maps, but not others. That's because your ranking isn't based on the number itself, but the total percentage of credits collected. An A plus is 100%, which will give you a 100 credit bonus. An A rank is 95% or more, which will give you a 50 credit bonus. And anything lower than that, you'll get nothing at all. You can abuse the refund system at the end of every wave, which comes with a lot of broken benefits. You can tailor your resistances to whatever robots you'll be fighting. You can switch classes in situations where, say, you need a tank buster or medic killer, and you can upgrade multiple weapons over the course of a game. It's very overpowered, but also pretty fun. When attacking small robots with the demo man's crit stickies, don't detonate them all at once. Instead, shoot your stickies one by one as the robots are standing over your pile. Depending on upgrades, crit status, and robot HP, this can usually finish off most small robots without trashing the whole pile. If there's a crit heavy section coming up in the early game, get Get your soldier to run the battalion's backup. This'll nullify all the crits from the robots while simultaneously giving a 35 damage resistance. Park yourself next to the heavy, and you should weather it no problem. Pyro can kill ubermeds in many more ways than just the gas passer. He can stun them in a radius via the thermal thruster, use a crit canteen in tandem with the third degree, or combo pyro in the early game with a couple of crit extinguishers. Also related, whenever the ubermeds drop down, be sure to wrangle your sentry when playing Engineer. This will prevent the level 3 rockets from going off and proccing the medic supercharge. Spy can body block robots just by standing in front of them while disguised. They'll catch on after a couple of seconds, but as long as you have your dead ringer out, you won't die for 
it. This can also be used to clump up small robots and get more of them within a sapper's radius. Big Rock is best known for having this large rock in the center that acts as a permanent invisibility mode with a proper teleporter setup. But it's not exclusive to just Big Rock. You can do this on the right side rock on Rottenburg, the crates on the back of the first point on Manhattan, and the really narrow rock on the left side of Manworks. As long as you have a teleporter up there and you never fall off, the robots won't target you. If you've already bought a few points of health on kill, don't use uber canteens against small robots. Instead, use crit canteens. The rapid pace killing will skyrocket you back to full HP in no time flat. When using the loose cannon, you can push robots backwards to clump them onto top of each other, letting them both get caught in the blast of a crit sticky pile should you have one set up. You may notice that some players will choose to enable roam vision upon joining the game. This is available if any of your teammates have a hardy laurel in their inventory. All it really does is give the robots a bunch of fancy hats to wear, which doesn't really affect anything gameplay wise, except for the sniper trying to parse out where a robot's head hitbox actually is. If it's ever an issue, just head over to options and disable it entirely. As Pyro, you can air blast the giants into the death pits on each map. It's usually faster to just keep them at the front and let your teammates burn them down with crit canteens, but if you're right next to a hole and have air blast force maxed out, may as well do a quick shove. If spies are attacking your sentry and you want to get a sapper off without exposing your back, crouch jump onto the sentry and keep your back either against a wall or near a cliff. This will reduce your chances of getting backstabbed and give ample time for your teammates to come help you out. If you're waiting a while for robots to drop down while playing heavy, Drop a sandwich. Your teammates can pick it up mid-fight when the robots start attacking. If you want to see all the loot that your teammates got without waiting a full minute to go through the animations, simply wait for the loot screen to pop up, close it, reopen it, click on everybody's profile, then close and reopen the menu again. What would normally take a full minute now takes like 5 seconds. Whenever you use a consumable item in TF2, the game will automatically switch you to the last weapon you had out prior to using it. We can abuse this with the Spicicle. If you take out the knife, switch to the sapper, use it on an enemy robot, but then get burned immediately after, you'll still have access to the knife even though it technically should have melted. You can use the pump against giant medics to drain their uber, preventing them from popping when at low HP. The closer you are, the more uber you'll drain. When using the shield as medic, there's normally a dead zone between it and the medigun that the robots are able to squeeze into and kill you for. You can obstruct this entirely by looking down. The shield's hitbox will be moved closer towards you, and the gap will be no more. On Manworks, the engineer can place the teleporter inside of the spawn room. Muscle memory is not kind to this one. If you max out the heavy's projectile deflection, any bullet that collides with a projectile will immediately dispose of them. This works especially well against giant rapid fire soldiers. Just crouch, aim for the balls, and all the rockets will be deflected. Upgrading explosive resist on soldier also applies to the self damage you take from rocket jumps. Pair this with the liberty launcher and gunboats, and you've got a pseudo rocket jumper with damaging capabilities. This also applies to sentry rockets, so have fun flying around. Instead of maxing out the uber charge rate on your medigun, equip the uber saw and buy some swing speed instead. Leech off a sentry buster or a non-lethal robot and you can get a full uber in like 5% of the time. You might already know that you can ghost upgrade the soda popper to get an extra 10% firing speed when you otherwise couldn't. But what you may not know is that you can do the exact same thing with the Scottish Resistance. Equip the stock sticky launcher, leave spawn and switch to the SR, go to the steroid shop and buy a non-sticky launcher related upgrade, then, once you see the weapon switch behind the menu, buy two ticks of the firing speed upgrade. Normally you can only max out at 35% faster firing speed, but now the Scottish Resistance will be at 40%. While this may seem minor, it'll usually let you pump out an extra crit sticky whenever you're setting up a large pile. If your dead ringer is on cooldown and you're afraid of dying as spy, equip the Le Tranger and start shooting the largest target in view. You might be able 
able to farm another one and keep yourself in the game. Rocket Specialist stuns robots in place for a brief moment on every soldier primary, including the Rocket Jumper. You might think that using Uber or Crit Canteens as an engineer does nothing to affect your sentry, especially because there's no visual indicator whatsoever. But they actually do. If you pop an Uber Canteen, your sentry's damage taken will be decreased by 90%. And if you use a Crit Canteen, your sentry's firing speed will be increased by 300%. Explosive Headshot won't just deal damage to any robots within a radius, it'll also slow them down. Make sure to find the easiest head to hit, so that way all the other ones become less erratic. If you need an easy tank buster for just one wave, switch to Flog Pyro, max out damage with a couple of crit canteens, and look up towards the top of the tank while getting as close as possible. If you're being bottlenecked by a tank wave, always keep this strategy in the back pocket. When a giant heavy aggro's onto you, they'll rev up their minigun. When they lose aggro, they'll unrev. You can exploit this by bobbing and weaving in and out of the heavy's aggro range to attack them when they're revving and hide when they're spun up. If you leave during the middle of a mission's last wave, you'll forego your loot, but your ticket won't be consumed. This'll let you play MVM for free without needing to trudge through boot camp. Sappers will always work against mid-sized robots, which means if you're fighting hordes of steel-fisted heavies, get one point of the sapper radius upgrade before anything else. This can stun entire groups of them as early as wave 1. You can also backstab them from the front. The medic's projectile shield will actually sever the tie between an enemy medic's medibeam and the giant they're attached to. If you sandwich a shield between a giant medic and their partner, they won't get healed. These bars at the bottom of the screen indicate what level the bomb carrier is at. At level 1, they get a battalion's backup resistance aura. At level 2, they get 45 health regen per second. And at level 3, they get permanent crits. Make sure you're always focusing down the bomb carrier to keep resetting the buff's progression. If you buy max jump height, wait for a buster, grab your sentry, and destroy it midair while using this bind, in some areas, the buster will walk around shit-faced and won't detonate until brought down to 1 HP. This'll let your medic farm uber off of them for the entire wave, provided your teammates don't kill it. You can exploit bosses using a medic stock medigun and a spy. Max out uber duration and uber canteens, get a spy to disguise before the fight, wait for the boss to aggro onto you, and then use your uber charge and canteens on your spy teammate. If done correctly, the boss will only focus the medic and never turn around, which means your team's spy can infinitely backstab the giant for the strongest DPS in the game. If that's too much work, just get 6 Brass Beast heavies spamming crit canteens. This'll burn them down in about 15 seconds. Can't see the robot health above the giants? Try this command. Can't see the robot HUD at the top of the screen? Try this command. If the Manhattan gate capturing sound won't turn off despite all the capturers being killed, that's a decade old bug that still hasn't been fixed. Try this command. If you ever destroy a tank underneath an above ground pathway, make sure to check up there for money afterwards. Sometimes the money will fly onto the higher level of the map, and if not picked up in time, you can lose your bonus at the end of the round. If you keep losing the game to giant super scouts, get your team's heavy to switch onto the Natasha. You'll lose out on some damage, but it's usually worth the trade-off, especially on waves with like half a dozen or more. If you have max jump height upgrades while using a vaccinator's blast resist bubble, you can fly off of sentry busters. You can also use the vaccinator to stick your teammates in walls. Simply buy max jump height, have a teammate kill bind with their reanimator clipping through the wall, jump and crouch at the apex of it, then insta-revive with the vaccinator. If done correctly, they'll be stuck in the wall. Also, if your medic is using the vaccinator and you happen to run out of ammo, you can kill bind mid-fight and get instantly revived filling up your reserve instantaneously. It's very niche, but it's often faster than running away for ammo. As long as you have teammates at the front holding aggro, a pyro can camp behind this lip on Manhattan and get free backburner crits without getting shot at. Against major crits on Metro Wave 4, you can spam reflect the barrage of crit rockets back at him, crushing his health bar in a matter of seconds. You can do a similar strat with the short circuit, which will nullify all of his projectiles instead of reflecting them back. If you die as scout and there's a lot of money stuck at the front, max out your movement speed and buy an uber canteen right when you respawn. This'll guarantee you'll be able to reach it before it burns up. 
Getting that money for your team is well worth the extra insurance. Some pyrobots reflect rockets in MVM, and some don't. You can track these tells based on the eyes. If they're yellow, they'll almost always reflect. If they're blue, they'll reflect at much lower rates, or not at all. When fighting giant demos as a mobile class, try circle strafing around them. Worst they can do is hit you with the residual damage from the rollers. With enough movement speed, you'll avoid any and all direct pipes. On Empire Wave 2, place three crit sticky piles on the catwalk before the round begins. This will let you one-shot each of the giant crit bowmen, which almost always cap point A if not dealt with immediately. Same deal for Empire Wave 4. Place 14 crit stickies in a pile on the catwalk and detonate them one by one when the hordes of small demo bots start flooding in. Also, on Empire Wave 3, get your NG to place the sentry here before the round begins. This will target all the NG bots that teleport early on into the round, preventing the rest of your team from needing to backtrack. Pick up the money too if the scout's a new player. Good chance he won't notice it. When sharing a crit canteen with a teammate while tank busting, don't keep your medibeam attached to them. Instead, use the crit canteen, then immediately dump your whole needle gun clip into it. Or if you've upgraded your melee, get a couple swings in. Whenever a robot levels up or occasionally gets a kill, they'll do a taunt. If they're holding a weapon that normally has a taunt kill effect, they won't do the animation, but the hitbox will still be there. Don't get baited. You can shoot Rescue Ranger bullets through your sentry if you buy the projectile penetration upgrade, which means that, at particular angles, you can simultaneously heal two buildings at the exact same time. Also with the Rescue Ranger, you're normally marked for death when running around with your sentry in hand. You can remove this weakness by maxing out crit resistance. Even on waves without any blue outline bots, it fills a niche. On wave 7 of destruction, a tank spawns at the end of the wave. Once all the soldiers are dead, you have enough time to kill bind and buy back in so you can get a full fridge worth of crit canteens. If everyone does this, you'll shave about 30 seconds off the end of the mission. You can do a similar thing on bot bash wave 6. Once all the robots are dead and the layout looks like this, kill bind, buy back, max out crit canteens. Teams. Much faster giant kills at the end. If you're using the airstrike, max out clip size, get 4 kills, and have a medic pocketing you with the crit screen, you'll be able to fire 16 crit rockets in quick succession. However, if you use an ammo canteen right as your rockets hit zero, you'll barf out 32 crit rockets in less than 5 seconds. This will be enough to take down most tanks in the game. If you sap an engineer's teleporter with the red tape recorder, the NG bots won't try to remove it for some reason. If a demo has a giant sticky pile to kill a giant soldier, please don't stand next to it. If you're running low on ammo, be cognizant of when and where your teammates die. You can feast on their ammo carcasses for an easy re-up. Against the giant health on kill heavy boss at the beginning of Empire Wave 6, you can kill bind right before you're about to die to prevent the heavy from gaining the health boost. Also, after killing the heavy, you can max out jump height to quickly get to the top floor and burn down all of the giant scouts with one crit canteen. They'll usually cap point A if nobody goes up to stop them. This is a good way to do it. According to extensive data recorded by these guys, the current estimated drop rate for an Australium is around 2.1%, meaning you should average about one Australium per every 47 completed tours. Despite every two cities guide claiming that Demo Man is a required class, that actually isn't really true. Only 11 of the 26 waves found within two cities have small uber meds within them. Metro only has them for the first wave, and Bot Bash only has them on the last wave. Empire and Hamlet are really the only two you're looking out for, and that's mostly during the first half of each mission. After completing a two cities mission, you'll get a collection of robot parts which are used to complete killstreak fabricators. The emotion detect suppression pumps, and bomb stabilizers are worth about a quarter of a penny each. The money furnaces, taunt processors, and KB-808s go for about three pennies each, and the considerably more rare brainstorm bulbs and currency digesters go for about nine pennies each. When finishing a full tour of two cities, you'll get a basic killstreak kit, a specialized killstreak fabricator, and the rare chance at a professional killstreak fabricator. The basic killstreak kit just tracks your kills. The specialized killstreak kit Hits, track your kills and give a weapon sheen. And the professional kill streaks track kills, give a weapon sheen, and give a pseudo unusual effect on your character based on the color of your sheen. Team Shine is by far the most popular sheen, as it's basically two colors in one. In terms of the most popular kill streak effect, that would be this one. 
Fire Horns, the holy grail for a lot of collectors. If you end up landing a Team Shine Fire Horns combo, depending on the weapon, it can double or even sometimes triple the amount of money you can get for it. Never vendor your kits without checking them first. Always look up the price for the Sheen and Killstreak Effect combo. And finally, tip number 101, sub to the channel. The MVM content is by no means drying up. So that's it. Hopefully you all learned something today. If there's any other niche tech you think deserves a mention, drop it in the comments below. Good chance I'll signal boost it for you. Thank you all very much for watching the video. Twitter and Discord are in the description. And that's all I got. See ya.